Let me take this honor to introduce uh, the next uh, speaker on stage, Dr. Arvind Kumar, EDG Crisat, who is going to uh, be talking on aligning ourselves to SDGs. The Crisat's approach. Uh, I request the guest of honor to kindly speak on this. But before this, I also would like to introduce uh, his profile. Dr. Arvind Kumar is an experienced crop scientist with more than 28 years of experience in crop improvement, trade discovery uh, to drought tolerance, disease insect resistance, and translational research. His area of expertise includes climate resilience, uh, nutrition, crop improvement, genomics, trade development, and disease management, policy, agribusiness, market linkages, and capacity development of ICRISAT mandated crops. So I would request you to kindly uh, enlighten uh, the audience uh, with your insights. Over to you, sir. Bringing ICRISAT uh, to this uh, uh, discussion. And I, I am certainly benefited from the, the talk that Dr. Chintala just delivered. But net, now let's move on to a certain where we are. These are the these are the SDGs goals, uh, 17 SDGs goals uh, on which we monitor how we are uh, doing well uh, with our efforts to ensure that everybody has a food, everybody has good nutrition, our climate uh, change adverse effect is reducing, how we are doing. Uh, we said this in 2015, we said that we achieve it by 2030 where we are. and. Uh, we have only probably seven more years to, to left that we, we should say that we have achieved this. And I don't think that uh, we are there. You know, so uh, that's uh, what I feel that, you know, uh, that genuinely we have to make more efforts than what we have put in over, over years to achieve SDGs goals. Now, as an institute, ICRISAT uh, keeps on uh, working towards uh, improving uh, Poverty and hunger, reducing poverty and hunger, reducing malnutrition, uh, also uh, reducing environmental degradation, and also the, we, we work towards the women empowerment. And in fact, uh, but still, uh, we have a long way to go. And what the statement that I made uh, with the previous slide itself shows that you know there are still 71 million uh, people you know, who, who, who get into the extreme poverty because of the COVID-19. And also, the large part of them are in South, South Southern Asia, 32 million. And in fact, also in the Sub-Saharan Africa. The same is uh, our scenario with the, the malnutrition. 381 million malnourished people in Asia and 250 million malnourished people in, in the Africa. Now, the, the effect of climate change, uh, everybody talks. You know, and we know what's happening. Uh, we felt it last week, untimely rains, devastated our crops, and uh, those things will keep on happening. And so the climate change, the increase in temperature, the, the change in the pattern of the precipitation, the frequency of the drought and flood. And in fact, uh, it means I never realized uh, till I had discussion with the soil people that climate change is also affecting the soil structure, the soil properties. and so. Uh, I don't know where we are going, and unless we start uh, taking some remedial measures, I think we, have, we will have a lot of problems. ICRISA do work towards the women empowerment, reduce uh, gender inequality, and also uh, empower them. You know, uh, we, we talk of uh, equity, uh, just not equality, but we talk of equity, provide equal opportunity to everybody. And uh, that's where uh, we, we work. Very quickly, uh, so where we are now, if we talk of uh, these two, two goals, uh, SDGs goals, uh, the no poverty and zero hunger, uh, ICRISAT uh, approach is we develop uh, improved varieties, uh, the high yielding varieties. And many of you know that we work for the dry land, so our crops are the legumes and the, and the millets. And in fact, uh, we, we promote sustainable intensification and also we build agribusinesses and integration of the, and the social dimensions. And in fact, there are several examples. Uh, examples are uh, in the legumes, uh, where we have developed somewhere around 239 varieties, uh, improved varieties. Uh, we have, uh, uh, which covered around 4 million hectares area. And in fact, we did uh, work towards uh, developing the new seed, 380,000 uh, tons of certified seed and 6.1 million tons of grain legumes was produced. Now, uh, similar efforts have been made towards the millet also. And since uh, we are 
celebrating the International Year of Millet in 2023, I do want to say a few things about, about the millet. You know, everybody says uh, millets are climate resilient. Uh, millets can be grown uh, in the, in the drought-prone environment. And I always argue then by saying that we are pushing millets to that corner, that you are there suitable for that area where nothing can be grown. And then when we push millet there and when we say that, okay, we should be producing more millet, then we talk about that millet is not profitable. Now you push some, some crops in the corner and when it comes to comparing the profitability, you compare it with rice and wheat where you, where you provide 4,000 liters of water for each kg of the rice that is produced. You provide nitrogen, phosphorus, potash and then you compare it with the millet. So, so my request would be that give millet the place, the exact place, the appropriate place if we have to have better health not for the millet, but for our own health, if we have to diversify our diet, if we have to, to bring better health for, for the future. Now, we do work towards the, the water, water management, and in fact, we have worked with many of the micro water set projects, and in fact, in the span of four or five years, we have, in, in, especially in the, in the Bundelkhand, we have demonstrated that working on the water set projects, we can enhance the farmer's income. The next one uh, is towards uh, the, the zero hunger, and in fact, uh, we develop the, the improved varieties for the millets. Examples are the Dhan Sakti, examples for, for the pearl millet, examples are the Prabhani Sakti. We have recently developed the high oleic acid uh, varieties for the groundnut, and in fact, uh, we do work uh, very extensively even in Telangana uh, towards the ready-to-eat meals and snacks for the tribal women. And in fact, uh, uh, we have launched joint program with the Department of uh, Tribal Welfare Telangana, and in fact, that has been a large number of beneficiaries. And in fact, uh, we do also address the hidden hunger in, in Africa. And in fact, we have worked in that part of, uh, part of the world also with, with the women. Now, very quickly moving to, to the climate change. Uh, we all know what is happening with the climate change, uh, especially with the environmental deg degradation. Uh, means, uh, I don't know how many of us have realized that uh, our soil's organic matter and organic carbon is drastically decreasing. And if we continue the, with the same practice, agriculture practices that we have been doing over the last 60 years, for which we feel, all feel proud of that India uh, achieved the food security, but we should also feel that, you know, at what cost, at what amount of water that we are using, how much we have worked and devastated our soil health, and in fact, in turn, our own health. So it is high time, and we work towards both water. Uh, we, I, I put an example from the Bundelkhand, but there are several examples also from Ethiopia, where we have uh, improved the the, the water availability to the crop. And I tell you, the Bundelkhand, where we receive only 400 to somewhere around 800 mm of rainfall, uh, this is an excellent example where uh, the number of families who were, who run away from cultivating agriculture have returned back. And in fact, uh, now they are very happily cultivating the, the land. Overall, we have uh, worked somewhere around improved 72 million hectares uh, uh, area and in fact that has come into the, the double cropping. And the reduction in loss has been 30 to 60 percent. Uh, moving to the next one. Uh, no? Okay, uh, we, I said we do work towards the, the, the gender, gender equality, in fact, also. And in fact, uh, we have reclaimed, reclaimed lands in, in, the, in the Niger. And in fact, this has been done very, nicely by the, by the women. In fact, uh, women, they own 200 meter square of the land. And in fact, they, they made the income, which was equivalent to income that, uh, that the men farmers make from one hectare uh, of the land. We do promote uh, women in the agribusiness, tra train tribal women in, in many of the programs, including that in Telangana. And in fact, we also work towards uh, addressing the, the hidden hunger. Now, moving to, to our work in uh, uh, digital agriculture, uh, 
which uh, addresses many of the SDGs. In fact, uh, we have developed this make good, make good uh, in partnership with the government of India. And in fact, this is a mobile app and which, uh, through which uh, weather forecast is uh, delivered to 450 cities. There is another one, Plantix, on which uh, we work with the Indo-German start setups. And in fact, uh, it helps farmers to address the diseases, plant diseases issues of somewhere around uh, 500 diseases covering 35 plants. And in fact, now this is available in 18 languages. And more than this, this has had, as of now, more than 15 million downloads. Uh, we do use uh, GIS and remote sensing in addressing the problem of agriculture, in fact, uh, whether this is towards moving towards the insurance, whether this is moving towards uh, identifying that, you know, which are the areas where the, the second crop could be, could be achieved. The next one is towards uh, the gender diversity. In fact, uh, uh, the genetic diversity. Uh, many of you know that ICRISAT maintains a huge uh, gene bank. We have somewhere around 129,000 germplasm sessions, and in fact, uh, we have effectively used it. More than 1.5 million samples have been have been uh, shared with the number of stakeholders, and number of varieties has been developed. In fact, uh, this gene bank is an important source of building resilience against the climate change. So overall, uh, ICRISAT. Uh, uh, have uh, addressed uh, largely we work towards uh, the SDGs, no poverty, zero hunger, climate action, but also the partnership, but also the gender. And in fact, we have developed many of the varieties uh, in the pigeon pea, which has resulted in 80% rise in farmers income in Africa. And also there has been one Malawi seed uh, industry development project, which resulted in 5.7 million annual, uh, annually uh, from, from seed and, and grain cells. And in fact, also examples are the water set project in Karnataka that benefited somewhere around 4.7 million farmers. There's one technology that we introduced in Africa, which is microdosing, that help farmers to, uh, to get 30% increase in yield. And more than 40 varieties and hybrids of legumes, which are released in Africa, are under cultivation as of now. With this, uh, once again, uh, thanks to to Dr. Kalpana and all those who are with the involved with the organization of this event, and also good to be here at PJTSAU once more. Thank you very much.